much. Let me get these call in order. And uh, George, do we have any administrative things we need to do before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we had uh, several bills that were recommended to report. Uh, Subcommittee number one. Uh, first up, House Bill 1475, Adrian Orock. Uh, there's a substitute in your packet. I move the substitute. Second. All those in favor of adopting the substitute say aye. 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 Those opposed, the substitute is before us. House Bill 1475, Amendment Nature Substitute, recommend to report six to zero. And what the bill does as amended will state that the one page form that accompanies association disclosure packets will make clear to the person who's receiving that form that the uh, purchase contract for a lot within an association is a legally binding document. A good transparency measure. Recommendation is report as a All right, there's a motion to report and a second. Any further discussion? All right, close the roll. That bill report is still here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next, House Bill 1556. There's an amendment nature substitute in your packet. And that's a bill. Thank you. All those in favor of adopting the substitute say aye. Aye. Those opposed, substitutes before us, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 1556, Patron Ware, uh, as amended, uh, deals with uh, real estate uh, appraisals and provides an evaluation of a real estate or real property in connection with a real estate related financial transaction where an appraisal by an appraiser is not required by state or federal financial institutions regulatory agencies shall be construed to require um, a licensed residential real estate appraiser um, and uh, just simply adds three classes of appraiser to the current exemption that deals with employees of financial institutions. There is no opposition to the bill and I move that we report the bill as a second. And the, the appraisers were there when all appraisers were there and support the legislature. Okay, any further discussion? If not, please cast your vote. All right, close the roll. The report still in peace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 1585, Delegate Campbell, no amendments, um, deals with uh, the approval for construction um, and allows for a local governing body uh, to exercise similar powers that are already extended uh, to the housing authority. Uh, simply adds that uh, locality, uh, a locality may uh, do construction, not just cities and counties. The recommendation was uh, to report six to zero. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Please cast your vote. Close the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 1587, there's one amendment in your packet, a line amendment, and I move the amendment. Second. All those in favor of adopting the amendment say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the amendment's adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 1587, Patron Campbell, as amended, uh, essentially uh, provides that your floor pans to your house would not be readily available upon request. Uh, by the general public, and the recommendation uh, was to report six to zero, and I said this would include engineering and construction drawings and plans for any single-family residential dwelling. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. All right, close the roll. The report is still agreed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 1869 uh, was recommended to report 6 to 0 without amendment. Uh, it was supported by the uh, realtors as well as the multi family uh, uh, dwelling uh, folks. Uh, it provides that and actually makes clear uh, what existing law is concerning uh, liability uh, for infestation of bugs and pests in certain dwellings uh, by assigning who would be financially responsible for the cost or treatment uh, of extermination of any insects and pests due to tenants' unreasonable delay in reporting the existence of the same. It was a recommendation of the subcommittee to report 6 to 0, and I submit. All right, any further discussion? 
Hearing none, please cast your vote. Close the roll. That bill reports. Delegate B. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the next two bills, uh, House Bill 2045 and House Bill 2274, uh, do similar things, uh, but one in the POA Act and one in the Condo Act. First, House Bill 2045, there's an amendment nature substitute in your packet, and that's sort of a second. All those in favor of adopting the substitute, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, substitutes before us, Delegate Peace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 2045 is amended. Delegate Miller uh, deals with uh, several things within the POA Act where associations cannot condition, limit, or prohibit uh, sale signs other than limiting signs to those that are in compliance with the regs. Uh, associations cannot require a former power of attorney from a real estate licensee to represent their clients before an association and adds the failure to deliver the association disclosure packet within the 14 day requirement subjects the association to up to a thousand dollar fine imposed by the CIC board. Uh, that would be on the, uh, the second one. But that's the summary of House Bill 2045 and, and House Bill 2274, but we'll take them separately. I moved the substitute if we haven't done it already. We did that. Okay. Right. I moved, Mick, I recommend that we um, report 2045 as amended. Second. All right. Any discussion? As always, if you're here, feel strongly, come on up to one of the columns. There's peace in the ballot. Just, I understand. Just, uh, all right. Please cast your vote. Peace on the ballot. Close the roll. All right. That bill report still get peace. Having previously uh, described what uh, House Bill 2274 does, I move that we uh, adopt the substitute in the package. All those in favor of adopting the substitute say aye. 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 Opposed? Substitutes before us. Delegate Peace. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, House Bill 2274, patron Delegate Marshall was recommended to report 6 to 0. And I say Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Close the roll. Bill reports. Delegate Peace. Mr. Chairman, that completes my report. We did have three bills of recommend laid on the table. Is it okay? Uh, thank you, sir, for your hard work. Um, yeah, let's do delegate um, delegate night subcommittee three. Yes, sir. First bill is House Bill fifteen twenty six delegate Albo. We have a substitute. Now we move the substitute. Okay. All right, I'm behind. Would you substitute of some sort? All right, and all those in favor say aye. All those opposed, substitutes before us, delegate night. What this bill does in the substitute, it defines live entertainment. It has 75% pre-sale, 12 hours prior to the show. The tickets have to be sold at fair market value. It creates a new live entertainment venue <coughs> license. And if the patron would like to add anything, but he may not want to stop the train down. The uh, subcommittee recommended reporting six to zero, and I so move. All right. <clears throat> Is there a second? All right. Delegate Albo. Mr. Chairman, just real quick. So, um, you all recall that every time, every year, someone comes down and they want an exception to the restaurant rules for performing arts facilities. We've had two of them this year. We had two or three last year. What I wanted to do is create one set of rules for everybody to know what they have to comply with. So basically, this is a uh, way that someone who has a performing arts facility can know what the rules are for them to be able to acquire a license. Okay, there's a motion to report that's been properly seconded. Any further discussion? Any questions for the patron? Hearing none, please cast your vote. All right, close the roll. That bill reports. Delegate Knight. Texas House Bill 1694, Delegate Danny Marshall. There was an amendment, now move the amendment. <laughs> All right, all those in favor of adopting the amendments, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, amendments adopted. 
So <clears throat> what this bill does is for a nonprofit banquet license. He wanted people that came to this nonprofit uh, fundraiser to be able to sell in a closed container a bottle of wine. The amendment put on there for only once a year. The subcommittee vetted it, uh, recommended reporting 7 to 0, and I so moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. It's working. Close the roll. That bill reports delegate night. Next is House Bill 1743, Delegate Rush. We had a substitute, and I'll move the substitute. Second. All those in favor of adopting the substitute say aye. 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 Those opposed, substitute adopted, delegate night. What this does, it creates a new retail on premise wine and beer license for a historic cinema house for viewing movies. This has to be historic per the IRS code, built before 1970. The license established was $200. And uh, it's, to be honest with you, it's a new car valve. So it was recommended reporting 5 to 2, and also move. Second. All right, any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, please cast your vote. Close the roll. That bill reports. Delegate Knight. Next is House Bill 2029, Delegate Freitas. We have two amendments, and I would move the amendments. Second. All, right. All those in favor of adopting, you want to do both? Yes, sir. All right. Adopting the two amendments in the packet, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, amendments are adopted. Delegate aye. What this does, it allows a licensed distiller who has been appointed by ABC as an agent to sell spirits manufactured by the same distiller at a site, at an event, conducted for the purpose of featuring and educating the consuming public about spirits products. And of course, they have to be licensed by the board to be able to do this. It was recommended to report 7-0, assume it. OK, any discussion? All those in favor, uh, well, rather, please catch it. All right, close the roll. That bill reports. Delegate Knight. This is House Bill 2090, Delegate Corey. It requires a charitable organization to include in its annual registration statement a statement indicating the percentage of contributions that were dedicated to the charity during that year. We all thought this was a fine bill, particularly Delegate Alvo, and we recommended reporting 7 0 in our summary. Sweet, sweet man. <laughs> All right, any discussion? You love it? Tell me how much you love it. This was the best bill we've had in the subcommittee so far. Nice. Okay, let's vote on that. And we're voting. Gentle with it, just there you go. Close the roll. Bill reports. Delegate Knight. Next is House Bill 2374. I was the patron. Has a substitute. I would move the substitute. All those in favor of adopting the substitute say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. substitute before us. Delegate Knight. What happens is in the state of Virginia, we have opportunity to raffle off a house for St. Jude's Hospital once a year. This bill allows for up to three times in the state of Virginia, but only one per geographic region, which are the five geographic regions in the state. Uh, it was uh, recommended reporting six to zero, and I so moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. W. Bell. Jim, you still trying? There you go. Close the roll. No, 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 I need time. Uh, close the roll. Bill reports. Delegate Knight. Next is House Bill 2418, Delegate Robinson. We have a substitute. I would move the substitute.
We have a second for the substitute. All right. All those in favor of adopting a substitute, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, substitute adopted. Delegate Knight. What this does for banquet license, it increases from four to eight. The frequency in a year that a brewery or winery may obtain a special events license. We did, uh, the substitute says only the eight is eight per manufacturer, not eight, eight if they have branch offices, but eight per manufacturer. It was recommended reporting seven to zero, and I so moved. Second. Two vine amendments to to the bill, just for clarification, if there was um, more ownership in more than one many, one facility, um, and so I would like to add those amendments. Maria has them. Maria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The amendments are on page 31 of the substitute. I mean, I'm sorry, page two of the substitute, line 31. After manufacturer, you would insert. This shall not be construed to impact the banquet privileges afforded by this section to a wine manufacturer under common control. Okay, we don't have the substitute. Um, it's simply in front of us, I don't think. So do we have any? Okay. Sure, yeah, I've got two devices in front of me already. Is there anybody who would like to see the substitute? Let's see if anybody needs to see it first. Okay. Let me add a piece of Mr. Chairman, I reported the first one, which is on um, page two of the substitute at line 31. And the amendment, which I think needs a little work, but it essentially says this. Um, this shall not be construed to impact the pri banquet privileges afforded by this section to a wine manufacturer under common control. Okay, and the second amendment is on line 39 on page 2, and it is um, the same amendment as it relates to beer. Okay. Would you explain to everybody what we're trying to accomplish there? I mean, I, I heard what you said, but with, in the bigger picture, what's the problem that that solves? Um, Mr. Chairman, I would defer to the people who proffered this amendment. <laughs> Whoever that is, <coughs> come on up. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Katie Hellovich with the Virginia Wine Council. Brett Vassie and I have worked on them together, and I'm not sure where Brett is. Um, but our common concern was the language that speaks to common control. We just wanted to make it crystal clear um, that if a farm winery and a brewery were had shared majority ownership, that the eight was not supposed to be split between the two. That was the the point we were trying to get at, and. We thought the language was a little gray, and there's, I think, debate upon uh, among the stakeholders of whether they're needed or not. Um, so if, if it would be your pleasure, we'd like to go ahead and pass the amendments, and then if we need to work on them, work on them on the Senate side. And again, I'm not sure where Brett is, but we talked over um, these earlier. Well, we know the tremendous work ethic they bring to the legislative process in the Senate, so I'm, I'm confident <laughs> that, that, will, that will be fine if we just let them work on it. All right. What you're saying is you're going to take care of making sure they work on it, right? Yes, yes. We'll make sure that it ends up so everyone's happy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Actually, uh, Phil Boykin, the Virginia Beer Distributor, sorry, I just saw these amendments to the substitute that Maria had worked on. Um, I need to get some clarification from council, but I would rather not have the amendments that are before you in there. I think what Maria did represents a consensus that everyone was comfortable with, but I don't want to do any harm to the bill by any means. Um, okay. So, uh, anybody want to speak in opposition to those amendments? All right, all those in favor of adopting the amendments proposed by Delegate Robinson say aye. Those opposed? 
Um, you won. Three to one, you won, I think, on that. So, congratulations. Those amendments are adopted. Uh, Delegate Knight. The bill now before us, I guess, is a substitute as amended, uh, seven to zero, and now so moved. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Next is House Bill 2433, Delegate Bulova. And what this does is it puts cider in the same category as wine. Basically, that's what it does. It just makes, you know, in the same classification as wine, we have cider. And uh, it's a pretty simple bill, straightforward. <coughs> and uh, the subcommittee recommended reporting 7 to 0. And also, All right, any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Yes, sir. That's all of our subcommittee had. All right. Thank you, Delegate. Um, Delegate Lemonian, you have one bill, I think. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, one that we passed by previously. I'm just uh, patrons here. I didn't see it. Uh, this is House Bill 1988, offered by uh, Delegate John Bell. Uh, this is related to. Uh, um, Light emitting diodes used in outdoor lighting fixtures. I believe he's got some amendments or a substitute that we should uh, circulate, and maybe while we're doing that, I'll tell you about the bill because I don't think I've done that yet. Um, this bill requires any authority, department, agency, or institution of the Commonwealth that installs, replaces, or maintains an outdoor lighting fixture to use light emitting diodes instead of traditional incandescent light bulbs when installing new outdoor lighting fixtures or replacing non functioning bulbs on existing outdoor lighting fixtures. It also provides Department of General Services include requirement to use LEDs in the agency's purchasing regulations. There's exceptions for Virginia landmarks, historic resources, and I believe if I understand the patron's uh, intent of the substitute is to make some additional exceptions, which uh, I think he uh, is prepared to explain in just a moment. Uh, what's the, the, the bottom line here is these uh, particular lighting devices and members may be familiar with them. They're the little point source things you see in red lights and green lights and traffic stops and now sold in hardware stores. But uh, the electric consumption of these bulbs is about 10% in some cases of a traditional bulb and sometimes in the lifetime is often 10 times longer. So they're, they're a big deal. I used to be in a business that supplied materials to light and many diet manufacturers. So that's the purpose of the bill. I guess to save energy long term for the Commonwealth and I'll Defer to the patron so he can explain his uh, substitute. And I move to adopt the substitute so it's properly before us. All those in favor of adopting the substitute say aye. Those opposed, substitute is adopted. Uh, Delegate Bell. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. Uh, three amendments uh, that are on this, I'll direct you to line 19 and 20. Uh, we added a provision that would give state agencies in the instances where use of LEDs are not cost effective the ability to uh, not comply. Uh, we did this after talking with VDOT and some others. There's, uh, for instance, some older bridges we have. Uh, they have unusual con electrical conduit and it would be difficult to retrofit LEDs there. So in that case, it would not be cost effective. We want to make sure that they have the ability to, to uh, waiver. Uh, the second uh, amendment is on uh, line 73 through, excuse me, 77 through 79. And um, thank Delegate Robinson for this one. Uh, we actually uh, wanted to make sure that this was a provision that uh, they would exhaust all old supply that they have, so those would not be wasted and in the switchover. We want them to utilize whatever inventory they have. And then the last one is uh, on uh, lines 80, 81. And uh, this is uh, after speaking with VDOT uh, on this extensively. Uh, basically, we don't want them to have to go out and have change orders on contracts that are currently in force. So ones that are advertised uh, at, after July 1st, 2018, would have this provision in there. So then they would switch to LEDs. Uh, the last thing I would say in, 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 on behalf of this, I actually have a letter from DASCOM, which is uh, one of the LED manufacturers in Virginia. There are actually three LED manufacturers, Crenshaw Lighting, LTS, 
Uh, LED Crenshaw's in Roanoke, LTS is in Portsmouth, and uh, Gascom is in Verona, Virginia. Uh, Delegate Landis was kind enough to sign on as a co-patron of this bill. Uh, this would create Virginia jobs, and these are Virginia companies that should benefit from our procurement uh, laws. And uh, not only do they save maintenance dollars, they save electricity dollars, and they create Virginia jobs. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. All right. Any questions for the patron? Um, okay, we do have a letter from Appropriations. I think they have assess the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hopefully just the good. Um, uh, is there a motion on the bill? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we report 1988 and refer the bill to the Committee on Appropriations. Okay. Um, any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Somebody will get you. Kelly Hodges says yes. Um, all right, that bill reports and is referred to the Committee on Appropriations. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that concludes the bill of the group now. It does. I'll have a few more for you next Tuesday. I understand. I hope not, but okay. <laughs> Delegate Hodges, um, you have one bill, I think, and the patron is here to explain it. You'd rather not do that. Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, actually, House Bill 2025, Delegate Freitas, is with Religious Freedom, Solemnization, and Marriage. The patron is here, uh, Mr. Chairman. If there are any questions, I he wants to explain the bill, Mr. Chairman. It was reported out 42. Um, we can make that motion after Delegate Freitas speak. Okay. Delegate Freitas, uh, your bill. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, House Bill 2025 uh, simply states something that I, I would hope would be obvious, but based off of certain things that have transpired in recent history, clearly it shows that this bill is necessary. Um, all it does is that essentially say that the multiple religions that we have represented in Virginia are not going to be um, harassed, they're not going to be denied certain rights that they would otherwise have for continuing to uh, hold to various religious traditions that they've had for centuries now. Um, specifically with respect to marriage. So this doesn't change anything with respect to marriage laws in Virginia. All it does is it says what Virginia has stated in the past but apparently has to reiterate, and that is that we plan to protect uh, those religions that have um, defined marriage a certain way for uh, centuries. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm, I'm Delegate, I'm trying to recall. We had a couple of different versions of this last year or maybe more that we we went through in this committee. Which version, is this one of those versions, or is it? This version? is identical to Senate Carrico's bill that uh, passed through the House last year. Okay, so it's not my bill, it's Senator Carrico's bill that was voted on. That's correct. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for the patron? All right, any members of the public who wish to testify first in favor of this bill, please come forward and tell us why you'd like it. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Chris Friend of the Family Foundation in support, this is uh, identical to a bill that you all passed out of here last year after uh, several revisions that were worked on in committee. Um, essentially, the, the bill uh, establishes or defines what uh, exists already that you should be able to exercise uh, your faith when it comes to religious charities and religious organizations. I want to point out it's limited to just religious organizations, so it doesn't apply to the private sector, and it's 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 specific to just the marriage issue, so no other issues at all. Um, we hear a lot about economy and economics and how these issues can uh, play in that. I, I want to point you to a study that came out last year um, out of Georgetown University that showed that uh, religion in America is a $1.2 trillion economic driver in the United States. Uh, thousands and thousands of people are employed through various religious institutions that supply uh, numerous uh, vulnerable communities with assistance uh, in partnership with the government. The government shouldn't punish those charities simply because they happen to believe differently than the government when it comes to traditional marriage. They take care of anybody that comes to their doors. They take care of their needs. 
uh, they, in, in innumerable ways. Uh, and we would hope that we would be willing to stand up for those religious charities that are doing so much for so many people in our commonwealth that the government simply cannot help efficiently. Uh, so we hope that you will allow support this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Jeff Caruso with the Virginia Catholic Conference here in support of this legislation. The big picture of what this bill does is, is this. Um, we have our beliefs regarding service, and we have our beliefs regarding marriage. And those two beliefs cannot be severed. They are, are part of a coherent whole of our faith. And what we seek to do in the public square and in the services that we provide in particular is to keep those beliefs together to allow us to practice our faith in its totality. And this bill would allow us to continue to do that. We employ uh, over 25,000 people in this commonwealth. We educate over 30,000 people in this commonwealth. We provide hundreds of millions of dollars of services in a vast array of areas from, from refugees and immigrants to adoption to um, food and shelter, um, health care. And so this, this bill uh, uh, would affirm uh, our ability to provide those services and respect our beliefs in a pluralistic society. Thank you. Mr. Caruso, before you leave, so it, I'm just trying to re-familiarize with myself with this and maybe the committee. So the bill says no person, it uses the word person, but you also define person in the bill to limit it to religious charities, religious organizations. Um, and you rattle off, I know who you represent generally, but rattle off like the specific charities or specific organizations that come under your umbrella that might be affected by this. So it looks like when it says person, person in this bill means religious organizations, uh, organizations controlled by a religious organization, employees, representatives, agents, etc., and not just as as Mr. Friend said, not the private sector. So what? Give us some examples of. That's correct. So we're we're talking about uh, Catholic charities. Uh, Catholic schools, Catholic colleges, um, Catholic health care entities, um, those that, those that are, are truly religious in nature and that come under, under our, our diocesan uh, services. And, and one prominent example, I mean, there are various ways that those entities interact with, with the government. One way I pointed out last year, I think if I'm still talking about, if I'm still correct, would be like a TAG grant a tuition assistance grant to allow that the state gives money to private colleges to allow students to go to private schools. Um, so a religious college would, it would contemplate that, that they couldn't take that away from you if you decided to maintain your belief system that you've had for forever. That, that's correct. And other, other examples would include uh, licensing and, and accreditation and tax exempt status. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next. Honorable Chairman and distinguished delegates, I just wanted to um, introduce myself. My name is Ryan McAdams. I'm a pastor of a church in the Williamsburg area, and I'm here to represent myself, my constituents, my congregation, and also about 7,000 other pastors and leaders throughout Virginia that I'm related to. And many of us believe that our faith is, particularly Christians, are, is under assault. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there recently was a survey done last year in 2016 by First Liberty um, that says that over 1,285 cited acts on religion in America happen um, related to schools, the military, the public arena, and houses of worship. And the fact that that is happening in Virginia is very alarming. I know that even about two weeks ago our governor uh, put forth uh, an order to all of those uh, contractors in Virginia that states that they must uh, follow the dictates of um, uh, same-sex identity policies that he has, but they're not necessarily in line with the morals or the values or the opinions of many Virginians, not just Christians, 
but many other those of religious faith. So we're concerned, and we believe that uh, the rich tradition of Virginia is a legacy um, going back to Thomas Jefferson, which is the foundation, as you know, of our Constitution in the United States and also our Constitution in Virginia, uh, in the Bill of Rights and, and Section 16, that speaks that no, there should be no restriction on the free exercise of religion in Virginia, and as we know, in the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. So we feel that it's under assault. We feel like this bill supports what already is law in Virginia. And there should be bipartisan support for this. This isn't a Democrat. This isn't a Republican issue. This is a bipartisan issue that we all are standing for our rights in Virginia, for millions of Virginians. And so we're asking that you support this. We support it. We feel like as the body and the representatives of Virginia, that you guys are here to protect and stand for us, our rights as Virginians, particularly on speaking today as it relates to our religious freedoms. So I ask you to support this. It solidifies, it gives clarification, in our opinion, to language that is already in the Constitution. So it's not doing anything new, it's not declaring what's right or wrong, but it's saying that we have the right, as, as uh, ministers, as pastors, to marry who we feel freely in our own conscience to marry, and to do what we feel is in, in uh, according to our opinions and our morals, and that the government has no uh, no right, really, according to the Constitution, to infringe on that. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, but thank you so much. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to ask. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Ryan McAdams. Yeah, uh, Pastor McAdams. Are you saying that? You use your microphone. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you saying that there is nothing in place that would prohibit you from, if someone asks you to marry them, are you saying that every person or every couple that come to you uh, that ask, uh, would ask you to marry them, that you would have to do that? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not sure exactly what, what the government is saying, but what we're saying is that is as, as a Christian, that I should have the right, based upon my morals and based upon the Bible, mm -hmm. to be able to marry who we feel is fit to be married. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Delegate McQueen. Yes. So are you saying, I'm a Christian as well, and I'm also a minister. So are you saying that, and I'm just trying to sure. understand what you're saying, okay? Mm -hmm. That you don't have that flexibility now, you don't have that right now to marry who you want to marry? Well, according to the Constitution, maybe we should, we do have that right. Oh, okay. But the problem is, this is the problem, is that we're very concerned about an activist government, particularly in relationship to what happened two weeks ago as a sign of that, mm -hmm. of our governor, who is beginning to make edicts that are infringing upon our rights, even though we inherently have them. But, uh, Thomas Jefferson said that we as, as human beings that the number one right that we've been given from our Creator is to worship Him freely. And that even God, even God has not coerced us to act out our faith and even to worship Him directly. But we've been given the right as human beings to worship God in the way that we choose fit. So what I'm saying Pastor is that Thomas, our... Pastor Thomas Jefferson, I'm... Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, this is can I, can I, can I the first time. Go ahead. I like what you said. Yes, <laughs> you. Pass the chair. I mean, pass the chair. Pass the chair. <laughs> Bless you. you <laughs> Mr. Never mind. You know what? I think that was God saying, just whatever you're going to say, keep it to yourself, Dewar. So that's fine. <laughs> Never Mr. mind. Chair. I just don't, don't, Mr. Chair, just. You don't, you don't have to uh, minister to me about Thomas Jefferson. I think that I'm okay. I'm just answering your question. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Eddie. Eddie Ailes, Executive Director of the Virginia Assembly and the Baptist, about 500 churches around the Commonwealth. Uh, there's Faith Baptist College in Fredericksburg, and uh, there are various rescue missions, and even here in the city of Richmond, Good Samaritan Inn, which, to my understanding, has had opportunity to minister to individuals and it would benefit to the state in some areas. And so our concern is, again, being told that uh, we would have to 
change our values in some ways to be able to maintain, for example, uh, um, the fact that we have tax exempt status and these types of things. And we're, we're seeing a little bit, again, concerned about some of that potential. Thank you, sir. Delhi, peace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Delhi, just for clarity, because we often talk about uh, what a bill does and what it doesn't do. And just so I'm clear, what your bill does not do is seek to prescribe any pr protections or to give uh, like a conscience clause, if you will, to a civil celebrant who's under an order of appointment by a circuit court to perform and solemnize marriage. Is that, that person still is under an order to receive people who come in with a marriage certificate and then certify that marriage and return it to the clerk's office. That, that, that's, that's correct. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. People, people that are filling a civil function are still expected to fill that civil function outside, within the private sector, outside of a religious institution. Again, this is simply about preventing the government from punishing a religious organization because it doesn't fit with a current governor's or somebody else's interpretation of certain social standards. All right. Uh, anyone desiring to testify in, against this bill, please come forward. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, James Parrish, Equality Virginia, we were spoke at length about this bill last year. Um, first of all, no one in the Commonwealth of Virginia, a religious leader, is being forced to marry anyone they do not want to marry, nor is any religious organization being forced to hold a celebration for a marriage they don't want to. Um, I think everyone that spoke before me actually agreed with that. Um, and we're okay with that. You'll never see Equality Virginia speaking against those religious liberties. But this bill does a lot more than that. And first of all, under the definition of person, it says a person can also be an organization that's operated in connection with a religious organization. So we would like to see a lot more clarity about what that means. What is an organization that operates in connection with a religious organization. It doesn't say private, public, it just says organization. Also, this bill is nothing more than a way to discriminate against gay and loving couples in the Commonwealth. Because as I've already mentioned, and we all agree, the religious liberty of solemnization and religious organizations already exist. Also, Mr. Chairman, we heard mention of the executive order and how that's an infringement and I take great issue with that because all that said is the state can't use tax dollars and gay and transgender people are tax paying citizens. So it's saying the state can't use our tax dollars to discriminate against us. And so for that and many other reasons that I've stated before, Equality Virginia does not support this bill and we ask you to oppose it today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very briefly, Chairman, members of the committee, uh, my name is Charlie Schmidt from the ACLU of Virginia. For reasons stated last year and also to echo quality of Virginia, we would just want to go on record saying we um, oppose this measure. So we hope it will work out. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Any other members of the public wishing to testify? Delegate Freitas, you have the last word. Again, Mr. Chairman, all I would say is that I reject the idea that this is somehow meant to be um, you know, discriminatory against a, a certain group of people. I think, again, all this is meant to do at the end of the day is say a religious organization that has certain beliefs with respect to marriage is not going to be punished by the government for continuing to hold fast to those beliefs. Um, again, I wish this, I, I would love for us to get to a point in a not so distant future where government gets out of the marriage question altogether. Right, but I'm dealing with the reality as I see it right now, and we do have religious organizations that help with a, a variety of things from education, even things like refugee resettlement, which has a, a lot of support on the other side of the aisle. Um, are we going to tell those organizations they are no longer allowed to participate or work in conjunction with the state on any level unless, unless they're willing to adopt everything that a particular governor or a particular legislative body says? And I don't like this kind of for some people, I guess, isn't it? Yes. All right. Um, Thank you, Delegate. Any other members of the committee wishing to uh, say anything? All right, Delegate um, Hodges, we need a motion. What was the recommendation of the subcommittee? The recommendation, Mr. Chairman, was to report four to two, and I submit it. All right, there's a motion, and I heard a second to report. Please cast your vote.
All right, close the roll. That bill reports. Uh, delegate, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. All right, Delegate Greeson. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm going to go back to a bill that we've already passed, but unfortunately I was the only one who voted no, so I wasn't on the prevailing side. But there needs to probably be some action on that bill, so I've asked my compatriot there, Delegate Alba, to do it. Delegate Alba. Mr. Chairman, having voted on the prevailing side of HB 2418, I ask that we reconsider the vote by which we recommend reporting. This is the bill the Delegate uh, Robinson had where there's some issues on amendments, and I think what we all thought might be better is to just reconsider it and pass it by for the day and see if she can work out a grand settlement. I think there's Mr. Chairman? Can I speak to this? Hold on a second. So, did somebody make the motion to reconsider? Is there a second? All right. Second. Second. Hold on. Who says this? All right. So, we're talking about the motion to reconsider now. Um, Mr. Chairman? Robinson. Can I speak to that? Yes, please. Um, wow, after. We voted um, before. There's been some discussion. What I'd like to have done, if possible, if we could remove those two amendments from the original bill and take it back to the form it was, the original substitute that we came to the committee with this with today. Um, and if we could vote on that, that would um, take care of everybody and make everybody happy. All those in favor of reconsidering House Bill 2418 say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. The bill is back before us. Delegate Robinson moves to strike the previous two amendments that were made to the bill. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor of those amendments say aye. Aye. All right. Um, everybody happy now? All right. There's a motion to report. The original substitute, which is, I think, we're back with it. So, um, any further discussion? Anybody wonder what we just did? Um, all right, let's cast your vote. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Close the roll. Strike that. Mr. Chairman, I just um, want to. Yes, sir. Delegatory. Just want to be clear there are no amendments attached to this bill at this time. There is a correct? substitute that we've adopted, and the substitute. Um, is unamended at this point. Okay. We, we, we took the amendments out that we put in. Okay. Thank you, sir. We're voting on the substitute. Delegate McQuinn. No. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Please cast your vote. All right. Close the roll. All right. That bill reports the substitute reports. Um, all right, any other business to come before the committee? That's um, Who's first? You're first. No, you're second. How'd you end up? All right. Delegate Hodges, committee, subcommittee number four, is going to meet in, in about five minutes. How long do you need? We push it, Mr. Chairman, 4 30. We have a heavy docket, but I think we should be done. You want to say 4 30? Yes, sir. All right. Um, subcommittee uh, two will begin there arduous journey at 4.30. I'm sorry about that. All right, so we are adjourned. Thank you very much.